stoichiometry. Now, stoichiometry is a big word, but it doesn't have to be scary. Let's start out simple. Here, let's try some multi mole problems. If we have N2 plus 3H2, we get 2NH3. Remember to do stoichiometry on a balanced equation like this one. Now, how many moles of hydrogen are needed to completely react with two moles of nitrogen? Well, let's take what we have. Two moles of nitrogen and put it over one. Let's find the mole ratio between nitrogen and hydrogen. We have one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen. So let's times it by that ratio. Three moles of hydrogen over one mole of nitrogen. Remember to put it this way so that the moles of nitrogen can cancel out. From this equation, we get six moles of hydrogen. So six moles of H2 are needed to react with two moles of N2. Now let's try another one to see if you can get the hang of it. Let's try this equation here. Two KClO3 yields two KCl and three O2. This equation is balanced. So how many moles of oxygen are produced by the decomposition of six moles of potassium chlorate? So let's start with what we're given. Six moles of potassium chlorate. over 1. We'll multiply that by the mole ratio between oxygen, which is what we're trying to find, and potassium chlorate, which we already have. 3 moles of oxygen and 2 moles of potassium chlorate. In doing this equation, we get 9 moles of O2. Simple enough, right? Now here's where it gets a little more complicated, when stoichiometry involves mass. Let's look at a problem we've seen before. 2 KCl O3 yields 2 KCl plus 3O2. Now, we already looked at this problem from a mole ratio, but what do we do if they ask us how many grams of potassium chloride are produced if 25 grams of potassium chloride decompose? Well, we always start with what we're given. So, since we were given that there are 25 grams of potassium chlorate, we will start with that over 1. And we're going to multiply that times to get it into moles. So we're going to multiply it by 1 mole of KClO3 over the molar mass of KClO3. To find the molar mass, we're going to use our periodic table. You're going to add the mass of K, or potassium, Cl, or chlorine, and O times 3, or 3 oxygen. And that will give you approximately 122.551 grams 
of KCl03. That is the number of grams of KCl03 found in one mole of potassium chlorate. Now, if your number is a little different, don't worry. Most periodic tables have a little variation. When you multiply that out, you should get something around 0.203997 moles of KCl03 because the grams cancel out. Now that we know how many moles of KClO3 we have, we're going to multiply that times the ratio of potassium chloride, which we're trying to find, to potassium chlorate. In our equation, which we looked at at the beginning, we have two moles of KCl and three moles of KClO3. This gives us about 0.135998 moles of KCl. Now, if they asked us how many moles of KCl we had, this would be our answer. But they want to know how many grams. So we need to multiply the moles of KCl times the molar mass of potassium chloride. To find the number of grams of potassium chloride we're going to end up with, we need to multiply the moles of potassium chloride by potassium chloride's molar mass, which is 76.551 grams. And that is out of one mole of KCl. And you'll remember we find our molar mass by adding together the masses shown on the periodic table. When we multiply this out, we should wind up with somewhere around 15.208 grams of KCl, which is our final answer. Yay! What are you doing? Stoichiometry. Stoichiometry? No, stoichiometry. Stoichiometry. Yeah. <laughs> Action! Ma, 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 